recently, uh, Ludger Woosman and I published the work we've been doing over the last dozen years on economic growth, and in particular, the role of education. Uh, this book, entitled The Knowledge Capital of Nations, Education and the Economics of Growth, is really trying to make the case that growth depends upon the skills of the population. We have, for a long time, been looking at how quality of the population measured by international math and science tests that have been conducted over a long period of time, how the quality relates to economic growth rates. It turns out that economists have been looking at this question of what determines growth for at least the last quarter century in terms of the empirical analysis, but a lot of controversy. Part of it is that economists have believed that human capital is in fact important for growth, but the results have been very sensitive to the modeling and there have been questions about whether the simple analysis uh, that relates growth to years of schooling, the common measure of human capital, um, is really a causal relationship because it could be with more growth, uh, more growth causes more schooling as opposed to the opposite, that schooling causes growth. Well, what we've done is to not use measures of the years of schooling in these international comparisons because we thought that that was very unrealistic. What these models suggest is that a year of schooling in Peru is the same as a year of schooling in Japan, and nobody actually believes that. What we did was take the measures of the quality of learning, what in the aggregate we call the knowledge capital of nations and relate that to growth rates. It turns out that instead of explaining 25% of the variation in growth rates that most prior models did, we can explain 75% of the variation in growth rates across countries by simply measuring the knowledge capital of the nation, how well they do in these uh, basic skills. Now, of course, the real question is all about whether uh, skills as we measure them cause growth or, the, or something else is causing growth that we're uh, just attributing to skills. So a large part of the book uh, at the beginning is trying to look at things that could uh, lead us to be wrong, things that could alternatively explain growth rates that weren't due to increased skills. What we do in a variety of different analyses from, in technical terms, instru instrumental variables analyses to uh, various sensitivity analyses uh, to other approaches to try to get at causation, we think that we have eliminated most of the largest uh, concerns about causation. Now, in this kind of work, you can't be completely certain that you've eliminated everything, but we think that we've gone far enough that you should, in fact, think of this as a causal relationship. We show that, among other things, this explains what's been called the East Asian growth miracle, where East Asian countries have grown so fast, which has been rather a puzzle for many people. We find that it's the fact that they have high skills that explains it. We also think that we can explain the Latin America growth puzzle. Latin America has had a fair amount of schooling of its populations, but it has grown very slowly. It has grown like one and a half percent per year slower than the, than the average. And we think that that is also, also related to the fact that kids in Latin America tend to go to school a lot, but not learn anything. So what we've done in this book is to try to document the story that it's skills that count and try to suggest some of the uh, both economic gains from this and possible 
uh, institutions and policies that could attribute could contribute to faster learning, lar uh, more significant skills, and then faster growth. So we offer um, the knowledge capital of, of nations as our statement of how we think economic development occurs in the world.